Hi, Pep. Um, do, just following up the last question, really, from James, do, do you think it's harder than ever for a young boy to come into a team like Liverpool? I mean, there's so much scrutiny before they're even in the team. It like, has to write the life story, you know. I mean, it's something like Kay Gordon. And it, 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 do, you, do you sort of, in a way, look and think when you, you're young or you're youngster, it must, it must have been... Must be even tougher now, especially with social media and all that as well. Uh, I think it all depends on the team they come into. So, if is the team settled? Is there a clear idea of play? Is there uh, people who really take care of the talents? The worst thing you can do is bring a talent too early. Example: so uh, players need to adapt, and players need to understand, and uh, step by step progressing, uh, making sure that uh, the right development process is in place, and. With Vito Mats, uh, one uh, uh, one of the assistants, uh, he really takes care of the young boys, really gives feedback, and he, he really wants them to succeed. And uh, if this is in place, uh, then it uh, then it's only time that young players um, adapt in a, in the right way. So, yeah, that answers your question. Any follow up, Chris? I think Paul had a similar question. That was also I've, I've taken Paul. Yeah, yeah, I suppose it would be just like the, the external pressures, though. I mean, protecting yeah. them from that. I mean, obviously, not somebody like James Milner, who he made his debut at sixteen as well, yeah. and it must be invaluable to have somebody like that. But even in James's time, he wouldn't have had the, the external scrutiny, perhaps. Yeah, that they do now. absolutely. It, it 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 makes it harder. It makes it uh, more responsible. What I see as well, it creates. Uh, I see talents coming through are much more responsible than talents came through earlier for an example they have they know um, they know um, this world around there that the world is a mad place a crazy place especially on on the internet so um, uh, again you need to um, a strong family environment helps of course so to take everything into um, how can I say everything into logic and uh, a strong uh, structure around the uh, around the group uh, is important. That whatever happens, that uh, we we try to help them. Yeah. Okay, we go to Dave Maddock and then uh, Ian Doyle. Dave, you're next because I think Paul's question was asked by Chris. So. <laughs> yeah. uh, hi. Um, hey. yeah, obviously, one of your many responsibilities is is sort of kind of guiding uh, the, the pathway into the first team for the for some of the talent. And you say you have real diamonds but I mean it is interesting how these days Liverpool are at such a high level you know effectively you've been the best team in the world and how do these young players come through because you mentioned Curtis Jones um, and I mean he's played a lot of games but he still is is probably some way away from becoming a regular in the, the first team so I, I was just wondering how you you know what, how you can help them or what yeah. they have to do to uh, to, to make that step. Uh, first of all, Curtis is not a young player anymore. <laughs> Curtis is a full member of the first 16. So uh, that's really important. So uh, there comes different responsibilities. And uh, it's really important that we create this space in our squad for young players to be, uh, to be there. Um, say again your question? I, I think, yeah. I think well, I, I'm just wondering... I think those changes that we, because the level's so high, does it make it harder? Is is that is that is that because Liverpool are much? Is, it, is that the point, Dave? Is that is that the quality? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and what 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 you can actually do, you know, you as a coach and, oh, okay. uh, with the structure to 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 somehow get these young players. I mean, Trent's done it, but but yeah. you know, maybe he's only yeah. one in ten but, uh, years. So, example, if, uh, yeah, but I, that's what I like. So you need. Um, um, if we go to the last 10 games of the season last year, the ones who saved us were Nate and Reese. Because finally we had two centre-halves, we could bring back our midfield in place. That had, so that, that went a lot of credit to them, but maybe not enough in my opinion. So Reese Williams and Nate Phillips, they, they came from the academy, they were with us from a very young age, especially Reese, Nate, not as long, but they came from the academy and they made a difference. The moment we got injuries, only when they start like having this, uh, when we uh, put them in, into, the, into the game and with time and rep repetition, that process before was really important to help them to that because they weren't ready earlier, but on that moment they were ready and they, we made that, uh, they, 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 they helped us so much. So there are so many examples of uh, of young players who uh, who helped us over the last years, and um, 
if you see what Harvey did, example, in the first games, and he's starting in the Premier League. So uh, I think to answer your question, is it harder to come in a good team for a young player? I don't think so. I think it's harder to come in a bad team, to be honest. It's harder to come in a team who doesn't play fluid football or where the ideas are not that clear or where the manager is shouting like a lunatic or all these things. And that's what I like because, how I said before, we put our identity and our culture in place the moment Jürgen came. And that's already seven years of the same ideas, the same pathways, the same uh, um, trust into young players. And, and that's something where the club can build on. And that, that's the only way you can bring uh, young talent in uh, into a first team. Brilliant. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. And then the final question, Ian Doyle from the Echo to finish us off. Yeah. Ah, yeah, cool. Uh, just a question on Taki Minamino. Obviously, we haven't seen yeah. much of him this season. I mean, what shape is he in and what kind of opportunities do you see him having over the next couple of weeks and months? Yeah, Taki had a really good preseason, and I think it was really important for him after uh, going to Southampton, what was a, was, a, was, was a good decision at the time that he came back and had a had a, pre a complete full preseason with us, uh, training-wise, and um, he uh, he made an impact in the preseason. We were really enthusiastic about him. So um, then he had a, a small issue, but um, he's back now, and we um, uh, with the, with the national team, and uh, he was not 100% fit because he came back early, uh, but now he's good to go, and um, we are really um, we're really happy that he's part of our team and. He has this, I, I said to Jürgen, he said, wow, uh, um, uh, the amount of times Taki comes 1v1 against the goalkeeper. And, and I said, yeah, it shows that you don't need like super, super speed to come 1v1 on the goalkeeper. He's a very natural, intelligent mover. And that's what we need. We need already in the last games. But sometimes, uh, now... Um, uh, he has this uh, good timings to move him behind, good combination play when the players are close to him. So uh, he, he only can become better, and that's what we like. That's why we brought him in at that time, because we saw the potential, not the uh, end product.